Okay, sorry about that. I did not even have my mic on. That's how boneheaded I have become. So I haven't been to the range in about a month. It's been just miserable between weather and other things that I had to do. I haven't been to the range in a month. So apparently I got completely stupid in that period of time. Did not even have my mic on. Luckily, I only shot one magazine in total silence before I realized the problem or it would have been a pretty wasted day, huh? You guys are like, no, we don't mind if we can't hear you talk. Just shut up and shoot. Yeah, but you got to hear the gunfire. It's no fun without gunfire, right? And a little ring of steel on those occasions when I hit the steel. Anyway, as I was saying <laughs> before I had my mic on, uh, it looks like it's shooting a little to the left. And I'm not sure if that's me or if it's the sights or what, because I haven't had this gun out in a long time. The other thing I was saying in total silence was... The FNX is something I haven't had out in a long time, and so I had a request. Someone commented on one of my other videos, uh, one of the At The Range videos, and said, hey man, can you get the FNX 45 out and shoot it again? And yes, I take requests, and if I am able to fulfill that request, I am more than happy to do so, especially when it is 45 ACP. So the other thing is that I mentioned is I'm shooting this ammo that I picked up online. It's bulk remanufactured stuff called Oak Island Ammunition. And I said something very clever, I thought. Uh, I said, uh, you know, before I shot any, I said, gee, it's Oak Island and it, right now it's a mystery. Um, so the mystery is starting to unravel. It is starting to reveal itself. Uh, and oddly enough, on that falling tree, it wasn't even moving the plates. It moved the plates one time out of several hits. Uh, and I'm noticing that the brass is landing around my feet. So it's not ejecting the brass very far, which all that indicates to me is probably a pretty weak load, which means the folks at Oak Island saved themselves some money on powder. Let's see as I progress here. So let me try those plates again. No, it's not moving it. Moving that one. But I got to hold off a little bit to the right, or to the left, I mean, because it's, it's hitting to the right. All right, let's go back to the pink target so I can see where I'm hitting. And I'm aiming pretty much dead center. Yeah, not too bad. It's a little bit to the right, it looks like, but not too bad. At this distance, I'm about 13 yards from that target array. And at this distance, I should be able to hit all of those plates, even though they are very small. Uh, still, should be able to hit them. I don't know why that one doesn't want to fall. Let's see if I can uh, persuade it. There we go. Well, that was weird. There we go. Yeah, I'm exhausted <laughs> after getting that one plate down. Goodness. And there we see 
evidence that uh, these probably are a little underpowered. And that was the last round? Yes, it was. All right, so that's 45 rounds. I had these 15 round magazines, which are awesome. <laughs> 15 rounders, double stacks, they were full. So there's three of them. That was 45 rounds, and I'm not too terribly impressed with the Oak Island ammo. It's better than not having ammo and staying home. It is better than that, but not by a whole lot. I've loaded up a couple mags uh, with just 10 rounds each of my own hand loads. So these are still hand loads, but they are my hand loads. I know them a little better, and quite honestly, I trust them a little better. Well, let's just see how the gun does with my ammo. Well, I've got, still got it trained to perch on my arm, don't I? and stovepipe, so maybe it's not the ammo, or maybe it just takes really tough ammo. So I got a stovepipe with my own stuff here too. Now I load my ammo to give me, um, I try to get about 850 feet per second or so with a 230 grain ball. Um, that's about what I go for. So. I haven't chronoed it in a long time, so I have to admit that, but... Damn. <laughs> it didn't even... did not even eject. The extractor's got a beautiful bite on it, but it just didn't... didn't go all the way. So this gun, you know, this, this gun very likely just needs some potent stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty pitiful, man. I guess so much for complaining about the uh, the other guys because my ammo is doing worse. So maybe I won't do both of these magazines. I'm not going to make you guys watch this. Just seems like it does not like light ammo. No, not at all. Not at all. I'm not going to do it today, but I'm going to have to chrono my load just to see. I'm going to get through this magazine, kids, and then I don't think I'm going to do any more of it. Because this gets old. Hey, look at that. Might get two in a row. And that's all. Man. All right, well, that was the last one. Man, I don't think I've ever taken so long to shoot 10 rounds. God. All right, let's go back to the Oak Island stuff. And I think I owe the folks at Oak Island an apology because <laughs> their ammo doesn't suck near as bad as mine. And mine's usually pretty good, very reliable. So if you, uh, if you watched my recent M&P 45 video at the range, and maybe even the one with the TRP, that was my ammo. At least a lot of it was. All 
Uh oh. All right. We'll wait on this one for a minute. So there's a lot of new gun owners out there, a lot of new shooters, and uh, at the risk of repeating old information to uh, experienced people, if you're a new shooter, new gun owner, if you ever have a click instead of a bang and you're pretty sure there was a round in the chamber, here's what you do. Hold the gun, keep it in both hands, keep it pointed level at the berm downrange, or if you're in indoor range, keep it pointed downrange at the backstop for at least 30 seconds, at least. And uh, if you're filming <laughs> at the range, don't point it at any of your cameras or anything like that. The reason is because there could be what's called sometimes a hang fire or a delayed detonation. The primer could be sort of sizzling, <laughs> slow cooking, uh, and then all of a sudden it could detonate. So you want to make sure uh, you give it an ample amount of time to know that that's not the case. So. That's a little bit, just a little bit of a tip for you newer folks, um, and again for you experienced folks. I apologize for the redundant lesson that you didn't need. All right, now let's see what happened here. This is a double action, single action, so I can just try to restrike. I'm going to do that. Nope. All right. So here's the other possibility, and this is now looking like the most likely is that the slide just simply didn't lock back because I wasn't counting my rounds. I don't know where I was, so there's probably nothing in there. And that is exactly the case. But remember, safety is always more important than expedience. So whenever that happens, whenever it goes click instead of bang, and you're not 100% sure, wait at least 30 seconds. Uh, I've got this other magazine with my ammo in it. Should I try? Are you guys willing? All right, here's the deal. I'm going to try it until I get the first malfunction, and then, then we're bailing out. And I've got uh, one more thing we can try. How's that sound? Deal? Deal. Nope. Well, we got three. Almost, almost. Nope, yep. All right. All right. I'm calling it quits with my ammo because my ammo sucks for this gun. Not for most, but for this one. This is a double action, single action hammer fired gun. And the safety also is a decocker. So that drops the hammer to not quite all the way down and not quite half cocked, somewhere in between. So let's give that a try. Start out double action. I've really got this brass well trained to just sort of perch on my arm. And <laughs> another stovepipe, and I believe that was the last of those particular Mohicans. Okay, let's try this. This is Gecko ammo. No, it doesn't sell you insurance, but this is the uh, stuff that used to be the Walmart 
cheap stuff. That's been a long time. It's been a long time since I bought it. I bought a bunch of it a long time ago, and it's kind of been sitting around. I bring it out every once in a while. It is a jacketed hollow point, and it's kind of a, you know, kind of an old 1960s space capsule shaped <laughs> jacketed hollow point. It's very squared off at the front end. And it has feeding problems with a lot of guns. A lot of guns don't like to feed this stuff. So, <laughs> since the FNX 45 has given us so much problem already, why not, why not give it an extra challenge, right? <laughs> See if it'll feed the gecko. Now, the other thing about this gecko ammo is if, you, if your gun will feed it, it shoots great. And I found it to be extremely accurate. I mean, way, way accurate. If it'll feed, but not all the gun, not all guns will feed it. So let's see what happens here with the FNX 45. Now that feels like a more like a full powered load. It's all also a little bit more uh, true to aim. So, yeah, I like that ammo. Good. liked it just fine. All right, so I have burned through over 100 rounds today of, of ammo. Not necessarily great ammo. Uh, and I didn't exactly burn through it. I kind of limped and, uh, and hobbled through it. But nevertheless, uh, that's about all I'm going to do for an at-the-range in this ammo crisis. <laughs> so that's it guys. Uh, wasn't probably the most fun look at the FNX 45. I'll tell you what I will do. I'll shoot a little bit of uh, bonus footage, close-ups of the gun, and at least give you a little bit of eye candy to work on there. And then we'll be back out soon with something else. I've reviewed this gun in the past, so I'm not going to do that again here, but just as sort of a reminder to myself, uh, you know, this gun is, it's got so many great things going for it, and it is very popular with a lot of folks. Uh, for a lot of folks, this, they live and breathe FNX 45. Um, but it is a bit clunky. It's, it's just a big, clunky kind of gun. The trigger is not anywhere near the best in the world. It's not horrible, but it is by no means going to be, you know, giving the good triggers a run for their money. Uh, it's just a very functional gun. It's a very militaristic gun, and that's what it was designed for. So, you know, you can't, you can't pick up a handgun that was designed for military use and then complain that it's not the perfect bullseye shooter, because that's not what it was built for. And that is evident with this gun. But as far, I mean, it's like a Sherman tank, <laughs> you know. Uh, it, it is built, even though it's a polymer-framed gun, this is a gun that can take all kinds of punishment. It's a gun that you wouldn't mind having, you know, when you're when you're in the thick of things, because uh, it can take it. Today didn't make this gun look like it's terribly reliable, and it may be finicky on low power ammo, uh, but otherwise it is very reliable. So if you feed it good stuff, you're going to get good results. And I don't mean super high end self defense ammo. I just mean good quality NATO ball ammo. Thanks for joining me again at the range. Thanks to everyone who helps out the channel, including my friends at Optics Planet, who gave me this cool hat to help keep my noggin warm on a cold day like today. And they send me stuff to review, which is always a big help. Thanks to other folks who help the channel and support them, like Talon Grips. You see a rubber Talon Grip right here on this gun. They help the channel out. They've been a long time friends of the channel. And absolutely, most of all, my Patreon patrons. You guys are just amazing. Thank you so much for your support. If you want discount codes, there are some discount codes below. There's one for our Optics Planet, there's one for Talon Grips, and there's also a discount code below for TA Targets, who are the great folks who supplied those wonderful steel targets that you saw downrange today. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.